What's going on, everyone? When it comes to the Lakers and the Jazz, they are currently trying to figure out a deal uh, that they can both come to an agreement to in order to get a trade done, right? Lakers would receive some of the role guys. Uh, what is being put out there is a combination of Conley or Jordan Clarkson, Bogdanovich, and potentially Beasley, or maybe even these three. Rudy Gay's name's been thrown out there. I'm sure that they are, you know, doing the whole negotiations, talking back and forth. Now, the Utah Jazz obviously have to unload some guys. Uh, if they don't do the Lakers deal, they could do other deals. You know, they could work out deals with other teams. But, like, what are the options out there? You know, a lot of teams we've seen want Bogdanovich. But I'm sure if the Jazz had their asking price on the table, Bogdanovich would have been moved, right? Uh, no news is good news when it comes to the Lakers and a potential trade. Uh, now, obviously, if we get the news that, like, you know, the deal's done, then that's great news. But what I mean by that is Bogdanovich, we've heard the reports that other teams want him, but yet nothing's happened. So either the Jazz are waiting to see what develops with the Lakers or the Jazz don't have their asking price and they are still too high. Now, we know that their asking price is a first round for essentially everybody. And I don't think Conley... Clarkson, guys like that are going to be willing, teams are going to be willing to give up a first for those guys. Bogdanovich, maybe, but he's expiring, so how many teams want to give up an asset like that for a 33-year-old expiring contract without having the Jazz take on salary, which that makes no sense if you're the Utah Jazz, right? You can't do one-for-one swaps. So it's very challenging for Utah to get a trade done, period. Now, they could always, of course, buy out some guys at the end of the bench, but why? Then you're stuck with these vets that you got to play or you're just sitting for nothing. Uh, and then what happens to your young guys? You're a rebuilding team. You're a tanking team. Don't you want your young guys to get the, the burn in, get the time in? It just it makes things so complicated. Well, we're also seeing reports that the Lakers and the Jazz have both submitted uh, their side of like what they're willing to, to go for. And as of right now, both sides are extremely far apart based on the report. Now, we also know that they hold up and it could be, it could tie in to what this is, right? There was a report that the Lakers want Vanderbilt, but the Jazz do not want to give up Vanderbilt. But the Lakers... They don't want to take on long-term salary. They don't want to give up two first-round draft picks. Uh, the Jazz obviously want both first-round picks. So I imagine what it is is the Lakers are like, we'll give up both picks if we get Vanderbilt, Beasley, and like, you know, Bogdanovich, something like that. I could see that being the case. Or they, you know, look at it as like, it, well, well, you can keep Bogdanovich, but we're only giving you one first. And Utah's like, no, we want to keep Bogdan or we want to keep Vanderbilt, and we want both your first. And you could have Conley, Beasley, and Bogdanovich because those are the the players that have been thrown out that would fit in this deal um, based on reports. Again, this could tie into the report that they are far apart uh, because you know Lakers want to keep picks or preserve cap and you might be thinking well doesn't that make it counterproductive like well one Vanderbilt they can decide on his contract Beasley same thing uh if they were able to get Bogdanovich you're good so basically you could either if Kyrie Irving doesn't come because that's why the Lakers are holding out cap space the Lakers believe Kyrie Irving is walking through the door next season if he does you kind of just let everyone go and you sign Kyrie maybe you could re-sign Vanderbilt maybe you can you know re-sign Beasley you know, for smaller deals, that's always a possibility. But the Lakers were going to give up both first to go get Kyrie regardless. So the way they're looking at it is like, hey, we give up both first. We get Beasley, Vanderbilt, help us now. Potentially help us for the future. Maybe we can work something out to keep them. If Kyrie comes, we just let him go. If it, you know, if they don't want to re-sign. Now, if Kyrie doesn't come, well, then we can use that money to re-sign Beasley and Vanderbilt. Right? So now we got two young guys for our core and we can use whatever leftover money there is to go get and round out this team, round out this roster. Uh, where the Jazz, they're looking at it as like, no, we, you know, the whole point, we're rebuilding. We want to keep the young guys. We don't, we want to move the veterans. We don't want to, you know, we want to get rid of the Conleys. We want to get rid of the Bogdanoviches, the Clarksons. We want to keep the Vanderbilt. 
keep the Beasley. But the thing is, at some point, there's going to have to be a compromise. There just has to be. Because the Jazz aren't going to get their asking price. If they were going to get their asking price, they would have already done it. Right? Like, if somebody had a first-round pick ready to go for Clarkson, you don't think Utah would trade Clarkson? Because they could still do the deal without it. Do you think that they wouldn't trade Bogdanovich? Because they could still do the deal without him, you know, with the Lakers. Like, and we saw the Jazz not really care. Like, hey, whatever deal is on the table right now at this moment, that's what we're going to do. They just did that to the Knicks, you know? So it's not like this is something new for the Jazz. Like, if somebody right now has a first-round pick for Bogdanovich, ready to go, here you go, cash in hand, let's make this transaction, Bogdanovich would have been traded already. But teams know Utah has to unload these guys. Why would we give up a bunch of firsts and assets? Danny has been amazing. Danny Ains, when it comes to getting stuff, he's been great at that. Really been able to to gather as many picks and assets and things like that as possible. We've seen it, you know, Boston Suns to, to the, you know, the the now uh, Utah Jazz, right? We've seen this this play out. Thing is, he's never been in this situation where he has to unload these guys. He is hard capped because of the Mitchell trade. And it's just like, I get he wants some, but sooner or later, he's got to come crashing down. Right now, he's riding a ridiculous high. Although, I don't think the Cavs trade was as good for him as, as people think it is. I think the Knicks trade was a lot better. I think even RJ and three firsts is better than what they actually got. I know some people might feel otherwise, but those Cavs picks, those Cavs picks are going to be terrible. You know, because the Cavs are arguably the best team for the next 10 years <laughs> in the league right now, as far as like young up and coming teams. So those picks are going to be awful. You know, Laurie Markin is probably the prize. Sexton, I know a lot of people like Sexton, but he has the second worst plus Midas rating in NBA history at like a minus like 1400 or something like that. The only person that has a worst in history than him is like, uh, uh, Bismack Biombo or something like that. Off the top of my head, I, a little wrong on that, but I know uh, I know Sexton is the second worst all time when it comes to plus minus. That's why teams weren't lining up to go sign him. That's why the Cavs didn't want to sign him. He's not. He looks good. He has moments, but if you look at like the his impact on the game, it's terrible. So the Jazz, regardless, are riding this high. And he's going to have to cave at some point. This next like week or so uh, is going to be very telling. Because we are right now, we're like, we're about a little more than two weeks. A little less than three weeks, roughly, before training camp starts. Um, so, assuming a deal, if they want to get this done before training camp. And, I mean, Utah has to get it done before the season begins. But you got to imagine the Lakers want to go into training camp with their roster. Uh, that might also be why LeBron hasn't announced his thing yet. Uh, I don't know. It could be a lot of things that go into it. But I, I imagine if the deal gets done, it's within the next like seven to ten days at at the most. It might even be less than that. But because uh, what at the time of recording this, it's like the eleventh, I believe, or no, twelfth. It's the twelfth. Oh no, no, it is the eleventh. You you might be watching this on the twelfth. Eleventh going into the twelfth. Uh, so yeah, so you're talking. 10 days, if the, if the deal isn't done within the next 10 days, I don't think it happens. So it'll be very telling. But nonetheless, I do think Utah, they st- the way that they're looking at it, we still have time. Let's not rush it, right? That's how they're looking at it. We, we don't need to rush this moment. Let's let's take our time. Let's let things develop. You know, Lakers and Jazz, I imagine, are far apart because they both want two completely different things right now. Uh, but I do imagine that at some point they whittle that down. And kind of come to a happy compromise. I do think that they find that medium ground, so to speak. But as always, this is a discussion, so I want to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. What do you think? Uh, do you think a deal gets done? Do you think it doesn't? How do you feel about them being far apart, uh, you know, per reports? Uh, do you think, like, that's, uh, like, yeah, that makes sense? I mean, again, that could just easily tie into the report we got the other day of, like, where it's Vanderbilt. You know, because if you want... If you want to keep Vanderbilt and you want both picks 
and you want the Lakers to take on salary. And I'm the Lakers, and I want Vanderbilt. I don't want to give you two first-round picks, and I don't want to take on salary. You're pretty far apart. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, even if they were willing to take, like, let's say they were willing to take Conley, Vanderbilt, and let's say Bogdanovich, right? Let's say they're like, hey, we'll take those three. We really want Vanderbilt. You know, we'll we'll you know we'll even give you we'll give you one of the first. You take it on. We're taking on a bad salary for the next few years for you. We're taking on, you know, uh, we're giving you an asset, helping you clear your roster. I mean, it, it's mutually beneficial, however you shake it. Um, I just, I don't think the Jazz are going to cave on Vanderbilt, but I do think that they end up caving on that first. I think what ends up happening, it'll be, if I had to guess, it'll be probably Beasley, Bogdanovich, and Conley for a first, a pick swap, and maybe a second. And then, of course, Westbrook. That would be my guess what the trade ultimately ends up being. But, again, love to hear your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. That being said, hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. Let's me know you enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Follow by the bell notification. Stay up to date with all things sports. Join this wonderful community and all of our discussions. I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.